In a bombshell revelation that has sent shockwaves through the boxing world, former boxing promoter Oscar De La Hoya has admitted to paying off referees to allow his fighter, Ryan Garcia, to use illegal moves. A leaked recording of a private conversation, De La Hoya can be heard discussing the payments with an associate. Reportedly says, We've got to make sure the refs are on our side if we want Ryan to keep winning. I'll pay whatever it takes. The allegations have been met with widespread condemnation from boxing fans and pundits alike. Many believe that De La Hoya's actions have tainted Garcia's victories and cast a shadow over the sport. De La Hoya has so far refused to comment on the allegations, but the pressure is mounting for him to address the situation. The boxing authorities are also investigating the matter, and it is possible that De La Hoya could face sanctions if he is found guilty of wrongdoing. The scandal has already had a significant impact on Garcia's career. His next fight, which was scheduled to take place in May, has been canceled, and it is unclear when he will be able to fight again. The revelations have also damaged the reputation of De La Hoya, who is one of the most powerful figures in boxing. He was once considered a hero of the sport, but now his legacy is tarnished by these allegations. At the heart of the controversy lies the referee's failure to penalize Garcia for repeatedly turning his back on Duarte, exposing Duarte to illegal punches to the back of the head. This leniency, coupled with Garcia's frequent use of the shoulder roll technique, has led many to believe that the fight was not conducted fairly. Allegations that Garcia intentionally exploited the referee's leniency to land illegal punches add another layer of complexity to the situation. If true, these allegations suggest that Garcia's victory was not the result of fair competition, but rather a consequence of manipulating the rules and taking advantage of the referee's oversight. Repeated turning of his back by Ryan Garcia during his fight against Oscar Duarte raised concerns about the fairness of the contest and the effectiveness of the referee's actions. While a warning might have been appropriate in the first instance, the continued disregard for the rules warranted more severe penalties. Point deductions would have been a fitting response to Garcia's persistent infractions. By deducting points for each subsequent turning of his back, the referee would have sent a clear message that such behavior would not be tolerated and would directly impact Garcia's chances of winning. Potential for a significant reduction in points, especially in the later rounds, would have served as a deterrent and potentially altered the outcome of the fight. In the face of Garcia's repeated disregard for the rules, the referee should have considered the possibility of disqualification. Disqualification is an extreme measure, but it is reserved for situations where a fighter's actions pose a serious risk to the safety of their opponent or undermine the integrity of the sport. Garcia's persistent turning of his back, despite warnings and point deductions, demonstrated a blatant disregard for the rules and put Duarte's safety at risk. By disqualifying Garcia, the referee would have sent a strong message that such behavior will not be tolerated and would have upheld the integrity of the sport. The referee, despite several opportunities to penalize Garcia for these infractions, issued no warnings or point deductions. This inaction allowed Garcia to continue using the shoulder roll without consequence, potentially exposing Duarte to illegal punches. Another instance that raised concerns about the referee's impartiality was their failure to acknowledge or address Duarte's complaints about Garcia's use of roughhousing tactics. Several occasions, Duarte appeared to be held, pushed, and even shoved by Garcia, yet the referee took no action to address these infractions. This inaction allowed Garcia to use physical intimidation tactics without fear of penalty, further disadvantaging Duarte. The referee's decisions throughout the fight particularly their leniency towards Garcia's shoulder roll and roughhousing tactics, have fueled speculation about their impartiality and potential bias. These concerns cast a shadow over the outcome of the fight and raise questions about the integrity of the officiating. As Ryan Garcia made his comeback to the boxing ring against Oscar Duarte last night, a cloud of uncertainty lingered over his tumultuous relationship with promoter Oscar De La Hoya. Despite stepping back into the squared circle, King Rai and De La Hoya 
continue their legal battle in the courtroom, adding a layer of intrigue to Garcia's return. The ongoing lawsuit, notably, doesn't revolve around monetary claims. Instead, it's a contentious dispute over contractual obligations. De La Hoya, steadfast in his stance, seeks nothing more than for Ryan Garcia to honor the terms of their existing contract. On the flip side, Garcia remains resolute in his desire to sever ties with Golden Boy Promotions, harboring a fervent wish to navigate his boxing journey independently. Courtroom clash, devoid of financial motives, underscores the principle at stake, contractual integrity versus the pursuit of newfound independence. While the legal drama unfolds, the boxing world watches with bated breath, eager to witness not only the next Garcia's performance inside the ropes, but also the outcome of this legal duel that continues to shape the narrative of King Rai's career. Lingering question remains, will the courtroom battles pave the way for a liberated Ryan Garcia or solidify the contractual bonds that have become a point of contention between fighter and promoter? Garcia, the undeniable powerhouse from Southern California, takes center stage as the indisputable A-side in the super lightweight main event. However, the usual camaraderie between the fighter and his Golden Boy Promotions team has transformed into a bitter feud, creating a combustible atmosphere leading up to the fight. The tension reached its boiling point during the pre-fight press conference when Garcia openly confronted Golden Boy CEO Oscar De La Hoya and promoter Bernard Hopkins leaving both bewildered by the unexpected onslaught. At just 25 years old, Garcia, a golden boy protege since the age of 18, has hurled allegations that De La Hoya breached their contract following Garcia's knockout loss to Gervonta Tank Davis in April. In retaliation, golden boy fired back with a lawsuit, determined to enforce their contractual ties with the fighter. Amidst this legal battleground, Garcia continues to battle not only inside the ring but also against his own promotional team. The feud escalated recently when Hopkins, in a brazen move, declared, I will see how Ryan looks and then make my personal decision on whether he should fight again. Garcia, understandably incensed by such a statement, initially pushed back. De La Hoya, attempting damage control, dismissed it as a misinterpretation on Garcia's part. Tension lingers like a storm, waiting to unleash its fury. As Garcia steps into the ring, he grapples not only with his opponent, but with the very promoters who should be in his corner. The discord between fighter and team adds a layer of volatility to the upcoming showdown, creating a spectacle not just for the fans in the arena, but for those eagerly watching the drama unfold outside the rope. The fight for victory extends beyond the canvas, as Garcia battles not only for supremacy in the division, but also for control and respect within his own promotional family. Garcia, fueled by a fire of defiance, minced no words in response to Bernard Hopkins' audacious assertion that he would be the arbiter of whether the young fighter should continue his boxing career post this crucial match. He don't decide that, Garcia retorted, his tone cutting through the air like a blade. My coach, Derek James, does, my team does. Everybody that grinds with me, day in and day out, that's who decides. It's not him. With a laser focus on the contentious relationship with his own promotional team, Garcia took aim at Oscar De La Hoya's attempt to dismiss the tension as mere misinterpretation. And another thing I want to touch on is Oscar saying that we misinterpret what they say. It's plain English, Garcia declared, his frustration evident. I didn't hear anybody speaking any language I don't know, so it's very clear to me that they're backing this guy to beat me. Post-press conference Garcia, in a rare moment of restraint, refused to divulge further details when confronted by reporters. I'm not going to get into that, let my statement speak for itself, he curtly remarked, leaving an air of mystery surrounding the brewing conflict. On the flip side, both Hopkins and De La Hoya cast doubt on Garcia's focus, with De La Hoya expressing evident frustration in his attempts to communicate with the fighter. When you're dealing with kids, it's really hard to get across that message, De La Hoya remarked dismissively. Then you have Ryan saying this and that, so it's all BS. 
The disdain in De La Hoya's tone hinted at a growing rift, adding another layer of intensity to the already charged atmosphere leading up to the impending showdown. In a bizarre turn of events, De La Hoya took the feud to social media, making a now-deleted post that ignited further controversy. The initial Twitter statement laid bare De La Hoya's concerns about Garcia's mental state, referencing the fighter's withdrawal from a 2021 bout to prioritize his mental health. The deleted post revealed, I have to say that I'm really concerned about Ryan Garcia's state of mind. Considering his history of mental instability, which he's documented himself, his current erratic behavior shows he's clearly not focused on Saturday's fight. You won't take my calls, Ryan. I hope you're okay. Social media proclamation, though swiftly erased, left a lingering impression of the tumultuous relationship between the fighter and his promotional team. De La Hoya's public expression of concern, coupled with accusations of Garcia's alleged lack of focus, added another layer of drama to the already charged narrative surrounding the impending Saturday showdown. The deleted post became a snapshot of the behind-the-scenes turmoil, making it clear that the feud has spilled beyond press conferences and into the digital arena, intensifying the scrutiny on Garcia's mental and emotional well-being in the lead-up to the crucial fight. The once-promising partnership between Ryan Garcia and his promoter, Oscar De La Hoya, has devolved into an unprecedented and perplexing saga within the realm of boxing. The fracture in their relationship, initially concealed beneath the surface, became glaringly apparent after Garcia's defeat at the hands of Gervonta Davis earlier this year. The aftermath of Garcia's loss witnessed a peculiar scene as De La Hoya abruptly exited the venue, leaving his fighter feeling not only defeated in the ring, but betrayed outside it. Breach of trust acted as the catalyst for a tumultuous series of events, with King Rai actively seeking an exit from Golden Boy Promotions, the very entity that had nurtured him since the beginning of his career. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe, otherwise Ryan will be the best fighter